Hey YouTube, welcome to Beyond the Hype, a series I created to cut through the clickbait of uh, videos that you see online to actually critically analyze new Pokemon with new moves to see if they are uh, actually improved and if so, if they are worth your investment. Today we are looking at, we're looking at Superior with Airlace, but we are just looking at Airlace in general. I used Mantine earlier, this relates to Mandibuzz as well. Uh, so as you can see on the left, Airlace went from 45 energy to 40 energy. Um, so for, it's still 55 damage. So here's the here's the one main con. It's still garbage move, right? It's still 55 energy for 40, 55 damage for 40 energy. She's so only 1.38 damage for energy, which is a very very rough damage for energy if we're looking at that perspective. The pro is it did go. It's one less fast move now. It now only takes five fast moves to get to instead of six. So that is your pro. So the question is. Where does this come into play and does it make a difference? On Superior, I, so, so the problem with Wizard, not the problem, with Superior, your your other move is Frenzy Plant, which as you can see, 45 energy for 100 damage. These Hydro Cannons, Frenzy Plants are just nukes. So 2.67 damage per energy. So for the most part, unless it's a super effective Air Lace, um, you're probably throwing Frenzy Plant almost all the time, right? Pretty much. And because Frenzy Plant's actually quite a fast move to get to, um, it's only one more Vine Whip, you're very rarely ever like baiting. Uh, where it did come in handy like once in a while is if um, like I just got to, I one more fast move takes me out, but I'm at the air lace now when I wouldn't have been, so I get air lace chip. Like that is where it comes in handy. For the most part, uh, on Superior, it did not seem to make that much of a difference because, like I said, Frenzy Plant is just a hard, such a hard-hitting move. Um, I used it on Mantine earlier in my video when I used when I talked about Diggersby, but I used it on Mantine, and I found just when you have a Pokemon like that, um, where your second charge move is not significantly better like it's running ice beam which is just like okay but it's not amazing and same thing with mandibuzz like when you're running like foul play which is like okay but it's not like a it's not like a friends plan right and i found that if you're, if you're running a second move that is not substantially better um having air lace getting too quicker helps much more than it does in this scenario where it's only one fast move faster when you have a nuke essentially as your other move. So this team is Superior, Sableye, Bastidon. Again, just covering Superior is weak to fire and flying, cover it with Bastidon weakness, Sableye safe swap. So it's a very easy team. Um, if you haven't used Superior for Superior is always sort of like borderline strong. I think like a lot of other people use Meganium. Well, I mean, Venusaur and Meganium just because they had charge moves that were second charge moves that were more superior, right? Venusaur with Sludge Bomb, and then Meganium with Earthquake, which is far superior to Aerial Ace. Superior obviously got a jump in the rankings because of this. Um, the thing is, I do see it as I'm, I got a jump in rankings, I think for two reasons. One, for this Aerial Ace being able to throw quicker, but two, also because Noctowl got nerfed. So there's certain flyers that are no longer around, and then now the main flyer, Gligar, um, is also half ground, so it takes neutral to this, right? So that's why Superior got a bump uh, in the first part. So keep that in mind. Um, I do think that, again, I do think having Airless slightly quicker does help you in very specific scenarios, being able to throw that either in a super effective scenario against like a Metachamp or um, just if you're like going to go down and you get to the move um, that you would not have gotten to Frenzy, but now you get to the move Aerial Ace, where you get chip damage. So I think in those scenarios, yes, it is an upgrade. Is it a vast upgrade? No. Um, it's one of those where it's like, it helps, it's beneficial. Uh, I don't think it is like a game changer by any sort of means. It's it's not like, it's not like getting Frenzy on these move, on these Pokemon. It's not like getting Hydro Can on these Pokemon. It's slightly improving what was already sort of a borderline Pokemon. So I know it jumped up to like top 30 or whatever in PV poke. Um, let me see where superior is now. 21. 
So 21 is actually quite high. Again, I think that is also... Where's Meganium? Let me see Meganium, because Meganium just got... So Meganium's at 55, because it just slightly got nerfed because of Earthquake. And let me see the stats on both of those, because I've got to imagine that they're somewhat similar. They are almost identical. And I, fi I figure that because I've played both of them, and they play but they both play very similar. 111 attack on Meganium versus 110 on Superior, 138 defense Meganium versus 143 Superior, and 130 stamina versus 128. 2005 versus 2026. Very, very similar Pokemon. Now Meganium um, has the slight Earthquake nerf versus Superior, which now has Air Lace, which you get to quicker. Obviously, Earthquake is still a much better move than Air Lace. Um, but you actually have coverage with not coverage. You can actually throw something against a flyer with air lace that Frenzy Plant and Earthquake could not throw if they were like an Altair or something like that. So I think from that perspective, Superior gets higher. It has a 23 and 19 record in the Great League. Again, you're gonna lose to your flyers anyways. Uh, flyers, ice, steals are gonna be a problem, right? Because you can't throw anything. Uh, but outside of that, it looks like that Aerial Ace picks up a couple fighter wins. Um, yeah, so the meta champ, you just go straight Aerial Ace and you will win. Um, Scrafty, same thing now, right? So that extra, and these are still like close wins, 507, 535, 539. Um, so that, sorry, that's, I said 507, 507, 535 are both meta champs, one with One's with Power Punch, one's Psychic, and then 539 is a Scrafty. Uh, so basically they're both wins, but they're tight wins. But in those scenarios, with that Air Lace coming just that much quicker, yes, you just, you have flipped. Um, I'm not even doing this on optimized IVs. So that probably is going to maybe change it. Let me optimize IVs here. Maximize there. Maximize IVs there. 22 and 20 record um yeah you still you still have those so that's good so you still have those so 100 you probably flipped metacham and scrafty with being able to air lace one faster each time because it takes three air laces to take these out again air lace is still a bad move <laughs> don't get me wrong air lace is still a terrible move but being able to throw one faster in certain scenarios is important and the metasham scrafty matchup are two prime examples of where it works the majority of the time you are still throwing frenzy you're still going to have your weakness fire ice flyers so you just got to cover those weaknesses which again fire ice and uh, flying bassidon is a great answer there so that is why i paired it that um and that's that so great there with superior um mantine I felt was better too. Let me just matrix up Mantine with Aerial Ace versus Mantine with Bubble Beam. That one's maybe a little trickier because of uh, the bait aspect of Bubble Beam, but you probably have more coverage now. Um, and you do, to a tune of five more wins in with Wing Attack or Aerial Ace. And I, I felt that playing that when I played it on the other team. I did feel that the Wing Attack or Aerial Ace actually provided a ton of pressure that you would otherwise not get with bubble beam ice beam because i feel like a lot of time if you're if you're running mana time with bubble beam ice beam they just take a couple bubble beams and they reset but those wing attack carrier laces again not super hard hitting but mantine's bulking those do add up um and i felt that and i've got to imagine that mandibuzz uh, i won't be able to to sim it against its old one interesting it says run dark pulse instead of foul play um which makes sense because now you have more of a bait move in air lace that is even in, more interesting 24 17 let me actually try with foul play because i bet you you are now better with an air lace bait there instead of foul play and that would actually make sense yeah two more wins with so that's interesting do i got maximum stat products yep maximum stat products maximum stat products here two more wins so with mandibus and a way better average you get two more wins wins running dark pulse over foul play now 24 wins versus 22 wins and that um that is because mandibuzz is so tanky you have dark pulse which hits which is only slightly like one more snarl sometimes 
to get to than foul play and it hits much harder and now you still have an air lace which comes quicker so you can throw that more um so 24 and 17 record is quite decent overall again weak to ice weak to fairy weak to steals like these are the stuff you're gonna have problems with anyways um I'm not steel rock like bastion carving stuff like that so those are stuff you're still going to struggle with anyways but definitely i think air lace in conclusion <laughs> in conclusion i think air lace is an upgrade for the majority of these pokemon again it's not game changing in any sense but you will feel it in a matchup here and there being like oh being able to get to this earlier has helped me pick up this matchup here and there so um i would say superior mandibuzz mantine all worth trying out again here's 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 my main problem with all three of these pokemon and the first are they all worth building up and using in gbl yes because i think on the right team they are all great or at least like very very strong that I would I would put them on teams like this team if you actually wanted to grind with the team this team's not bad um you may even want to instead of just having a full smackdown bastion again bastion is super super strong I hate use I hate using these smackdown where you can just get walled I like Gfisk more probably but then that, that adds more of like a, a fire weakness you can use register steel same thing fire weakness so bastion is the better user if you have carbink I think that's probably a bit better but I'm working on mine uh, what in all of this that is this is my fifth or sixth one of this beyond the hype i've done gligar yeah gligar steelix him on top diggersby superior and what was the other one i did I did one more. In these six, to me, there is only one of the six that you will see throughout the top, the regional pick six, show six, pick three format, and that's Gligar. I do not expect to see. You may see a Steelix here and there, like, and this is where <laughs> this is where, this is where I have problems with content creator. This Pokemon is meta. You're going to see like five Steelixes out of 120 participants in pick six format. Meta to me is the Pokemon that are going to show up on 30, 40, 50, 85% of teams. And those are the top 10 Pokemon ranked on PvP Poke right now, essentially. The top 10 Pokemon that you are going to see on all these regional teams... For the meta, for the majority, are going to be Metachamp, Carbink, Lickitung, Registeel, Swampert, Gligar, Stunfisk, Sableye, Lantern, maybe Greedent now. Actually, so Greedent was the other one I did. Greedent is actually not a bad safe swap if you don't want to use Lickitung and Sableye and getting walled by sort of like normal typing. Using Greedent is not a bad option. So Greedent, I can see having a big uptick in regionals. So those are the 10 that I would see are meta that you will see on the majority of teams for regional Pokemon. Will you see Steelix on teams? Yes. Will you see maybe Superior Mandibuzz on teams? Yes. Are they going to be on more than like 10 teams out of the 100 plus people there? I don't think so. Quite honestly, I don't think so. Um... And I guess, like, why would you? Why would you? Oh, sorry, my daughter is fighting off a cold. If you can hear her coughing in the background. Like, why would you bring a Steelix if you know that the majority of teams are going to have Metachamp and Swampert or some sort of, like, Mudboy, Quagsire, plus, like, a Stunfisk, too? Like, there's just Trevenant. I haven't even talked about Trevenant, same thing. Like, Trevenant would cause it some problems. It just seems like there's too many options in the top rankings to deal with some of these other pokemon which are have play in great league just i have problems calling them like meta and game changers because i don't think they are
So that is my analysis on that. Um, this is the last battle. Again, decent team. The air lace, worth the improvement. Um, but that is basically it. So let me know in the comments below if you've played with like Mandibuzz. This is a wing attack Mandibuzz. I saw, I've seen more wing attack Mandibuzzes too. Like more people just going pure flyer wing attack instead of snarl. Whether fire off play or dark pulse in air lace. I saw like two or three wing attack Mandibuzz. And I don't know if that's just like uh, people just had that before and they hadn't changed it. Or if it was like an active thought that I'm just going to run Mandibuzz more as a flyer now as opposed to a as opposed to a like more dark flyer so I, I, don't, I don't know anyways that is it uh, I'm gonna get off before she starts coughing more because uh, she starts school too next week so she's just gonna be sick constantly if you have kids you know she's she's in that four to five range right now and she's just like they get sick so so often it's the worst feeling in the world anyways that's it thanks for watching um I'm done this sort of series for now. Um, and it's because I've gone through, I think, every Pokemon that I need to go through. So now it's just going um, and starting to build teams around these Pokemon that I think are good to start grinding. Yellow, even though it's the first week, you don't need to grind, but I know people want teams. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.